Hello, my name is Thain and I like to experiment with AI art. In today's video I wanted to explore Midjuni version 5. It was strongly suggested that simple prompts wouldn't work as well anymore. So I went ahead and tried out some single word prompts in efforts to find out if some words will affect the default aesthetics in transformative ways. I went for words that have some more difficult concepts behind them. Or possibly just words that I did not really know the actual meaning of before making this video. And here are 25 words that I tested out just by themselves and also in combination with only one other word. The goal was to showcase several possible types of subject. So the ones I selected for this video were, landscape, wildlife, and macro. By default the images look like this. Landscape has some digital painting mixed in along with drawing style. Wildlife is very photographic and photorealistic. And macro also looks very photographic and all images seem to have some borders and signature artifacts on them. The next reference set is, city, interior, and architecture. I wanted to showcase an urban environment so I chose city. I almost went with still life, but eventually realized that it wasn't a really varied subject matter. All the images looked basically the same to me. Just vases, fruits and flowers. Interior has a variety of places that have interiors. Two churches in the mix. And architecture gives mostly exterior shots of buildings. And another set for reference is, portrait, fantasy, and sci-fi. Portrait in version 5 gives some really varied results. No women here this time. Fantasy seems to depict castles. And sci-fi depicts spaceships or futuristic cities or skyscrapers. The first word I tested out is ethereal. Meaning, delicate and light, often with a heavenly or spiritual quality. This is one word that I have added to my prompts before as well, and it might be quite popular. And it doesn't disappoint in Midjourney 5 images either. I like the angelic and flowy aesthetic that this word adds to Midjourney version 5 prompts. To nature images it seems to add mist and light shining through that mist. For architecture related images it also adds some kind of a misty feel. For city we get a mix of futuristic and modern cities that are kind of otherworldly. Interior and architecture images get very light colors. Portraits and fantasy images seem to depict angelic brides basically. And sci-fi gives some concept art with this combination. The next word is melancholy. Meaning, a feeling of sadness or depression, often with a sense of longing or nostalgia. Simply the word melancholy gives a wide variety of pretty sad-looking images. We've got everything from historical painting styles to anime and even photography. The historical painting style carries over to the landscape images in this seed. And wildlife and macro are very photographic. It makes me sad looking at those sad animals. The city images are looking very cold and rainy. I would look like that as well if I didn't have an umbrella and had to go outside in that weather. Interior images are looking quite depressing, those ladies look a bit bored that they have to stay in. And architecture images show some very grey exterior views. Portraits are looking sad too. The top right image has a really strangely placed hand. I absolutely love the combination with fantasy. Sci-fi is okay too, I just don't like the additional text pop-in. I guess it's hard to combine those two concepts and mid-journey struggles there for a moment. The next word is serendipity. Meaning, the occurrence of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. So this word just by itself looks like it's a bit much for mid-journey to grasp. It does have some nice aesthetics thrown in there but it might just be the default mid-journey randomness. For nature themes the images are very photographic. 
they do differ from the default look without the word serendipity in the prompt. So I guess it does do something to these images. For city we get city views from all kinds of different places. I would say that two look very European, one has an Asian feel and one reminds me of an American city. In interior we have restaurants or diners or cafes. And architecture has some quite nice looking buildings. Portraits seem to be all women now. I really love the fantasy images. Funny that they have so many bubbles. And sci-fi has some movie posters I guess. The next word is inscrutable. Meaning, difficult or impossible to understand or interpret. From the amount of text in these images, I guess this word was quite difficult or impossible to understand or interpret for mid-journey. I almost didn't include this in my video, but I do like how the nature-themed images came out. Very grassy landscapes here. And the quality of the images is so sharp. Inscrutable interiors look like they are either camper or boat interiors. But architecture images are the reason why I did want to include this word in this video. I have been wanting to generate architecture pictures in this style since version 3 and didn't succeed in describing what I wanted to see. And this does it just with one word. City almost has the same thing as well, but not quite. It's just really chaotic. For portraits we get photographs of men this time. Fantasy goes the way of cards. Although I do like those two images that don't. And sci-fi again does movie posters in concept art style. Next up is ephemeral. Meaning, lasting for a short time, transient or fleeting. I like the styling that this word brings. It is kind of mixed at places, but still nice. For nature images it seems to mute the colors quite a bit. It does that to architecture and city images too. They look like drawings or black and white photographs. And for interior images we get some hanging curtains or abandoned places. But now we get to the good stuff. Portraits are nice, but fantasy and sci-fi images are just out of this world. I love the dreamy flowy style of the fantasy images, and it has butterflies. And sci-fi brings some nice concept art style pieces that are very atmospheric. Now we go to synchronicity. Meaning, the simultaneous occurrence of events that appear meaningful or related, but have no causal relationship. This word gives a really special aesthetic. I don't like all of the images, and there's some text on all of them. But it has a certain vibe to it that looks really awesome. It certainly looks different from the default style. It doesn't translate to nature images in the same way though. For landscape we get some vertically mirrored paintings. But wildlife and macro give almost a duality with mostly two of the same animal in the images. City kind of does again some kaleidoscopic mirroring and playing around with reflections on water or something. Interior on the other hand looks completely different, I really like those interiors. And architecture goes for the sky, again mirroring the buildings a little bit. Okay, portraits and fantasy really bring out what I saw with just this prompt. And they also bring in the time element in the meaning of the word. And sci-fi does movie posters again. Although I do really like the floating city in the upper right image. The next word is diaphanous. Meaning, light, delicate, and translucent, often referring to fabrics or materials. This word really strongly changes the images. The square aspect ratio has some weird abstract flowy stuff going on, but I can just imagine what this word will do when combined with other prompts. And it does give quite a distinct look to nature images. Not sure if I like all of them though. The wildlife images look like the animals are caught in some huge spider webs. But I like the translucent quality of the macro images. 
city looks completely different from anything we've seen so far. It's almost like cities in an earthquake-prone area that don't have any skyscrapers. Interior images seem to be very white and flowy curtains everywhere. Architecture also has some interesting stuff, kind of ornate or intertwined lines. It's funny how architecture also shows interior images and yet looks so very different from the images that had interior in the prompt. Portrait goes black and white and very old photos it would seem. But yet again I absolutely love the fantasy images. Beautiful flowy dresses and varied poses. There's even more color compared to what we've seen so far. And sci-fi isn't bad either. The black borders in this aspect ratio kind of bother me, but that can easily be fixed. For some reason there's lots of orbs. The next word is quixotic, meaning idealistic and impractical, often with a romantic or chivalrous quality. The images with this prompt look quite quirky and have red tones. There's text in all of the images that I don't like at all. But keep in mind that I haven't done any remediation yet to get rid of stuff like that. I guess macro looks the most normal to me out of these. Wildlife has lots of animals on top or next to each other. Kind of weird, but okay. And I really like what has happened to landscapes with this prompt. Almost like abstract in some parts. City comes out as really chaotic with lots going on. Interior depicts bar seatings of some kind. Very calm in comparison. And architecture has some nice architecture going on. But now we get to the really awesome stuff. There is some text artifacts on most of these images unfortunately, but I really like the style of these images. It is so varied too, you never know what you're going to get with this word. Might be not so good if you have something specific in mind, but good for exploring what's possible. We also have nebulous meaning, resembling a nebula, indistinct, vague or unclear. With this word though, mid-journey does know what to do. I like it because it gives the image the space why look. And it's exactly what has happened in the nature images. For landscapes and wildlife we get a really starry night sky with Milky Way in the picture in quite many images. And the macro for this word gives images that are out of this world. Maybe literally? But they dons look like we've seen so far with the macro category. City also gets a very sci-fi look with the night sky. Interiors look very nice and futuristic. And architecture looks a bit cloudy and unrealistic, but the appearance is really pretty. Portraits and fantasy too lean heavily on the space and stars theme and sci-fi just goes to spaceships as one would expect. Next up we have serenity. Meaning, a state of calmness, tranquility, or peacefulness. So this is actually not that unknown. But it really gives images a distinct feel. Seems to be Asian themes in the images quite often. And lots of calm water. It continues to the nature images as well. Landscapes are, as expected, more waterscapes. And the wildlife is enjoying a swim. And the delicate flowers also have water droplets on all the images. For architecture-related themes we also see a lot of water there. And quite soft lighting. Again I really like the fantasy images with all the water and mist. And for sci-fi, I don't know if Serenity is a name of a movie or TV show or something, but the images kind of look that way. Now we go to Gargantuan. Meaning, extremely large or massive, often implying a sense of awe or amazement. And Midjourney really does capture the meaning of this word with the enormous monsters or creatures. Quite many of them seem to be kind of cartoony or drawn style. For nature images I like how the landscape images depict very tall and narrow cliffs. 
The animals look also totally huge. And it's an odd combination with macro as it is in contrast something very small. It's interesting how Midjourney has tried to depict something very small as very big. For architecture we get a strange mix of stuff. In the city images we get more fantasy with the buildings stacked on top of each other. In interior we get churches and other old buildings. And in actual architecture we have very tall stylistically weird apartment buildings that I for some reason would think as Asian. For portrait on the other hand we get drawings of very large men. And an orc I think. Fantasy and sci-fi images give a very nice concept art style of enormous monsters and robots. From what we go to luminous. Meaning, emitting light or shining brightly, often with a sense of brilliance or radiance. This word combines some nice looking images with some lighting. There's some text on quite many of the images by default, but I hope it can be corrected. For nature images this word gives a really nice lighting effect. Landscape seems to get more painted style in most images. But wildlife and macro are in photographic style. Architecture related images also play with light a lot. Interior images get some sunlight. City and architecture images also combine lots of artificial lighting. And out of these, again the fantasy style just catches my eye. So beautiful and magical. Sci-fi could again lost the text. And portraits are better than without this word I guess. Next up is maelstrom. Meaning, a powerful whirlpool in the sea or a river. Or a situation of confusion and turmoil. This word really alternates between ocean and stormy sea paintings and water park attractions. And nature theme really brings out the artsy side of this word. Very stormy seas. The macro images are oddly captivating and I even saw two of the images ranking quite high on my mid-journey rankings page. City images continue the theme. But oddly in the interior images we get some shots from some kind of an establishment with quite awesome staircase features. And there's some interesting stuff in architecture images too. Certainly not something you would see every day. And the last three also go back to the painting style of Stormy Ocean. In sci-fi we seem to have spaceships instead of regular ships. Moving on to inexplicable. Meaning unable to be explained or accounted for. This is again something that Midjourney struggles with based on the amount of text in the images. A large mix of all kinds of different styles. Landscape images look very cool with the colorful clouds. Wildlife images are quite strange. And Macro has again very sharp photographic images. I like the ladybug. Architecture jices some interesting stuff there. The floating house is something new. City and interior look kind of ordinary, nothing special there really. I really like the fantasy images, quite nice looking castles. Coming up next is euphoric. Meaning, feeling intense excitement and happiness. Lots of text again in some images, but not all and we kind of get an explosion of colors that looks quite abstract in some images. In nature images we get also some more color across the board. And very happy animals. City images look cool. But I especially like the interior and architecture images, really awesome looking designs there. The portraits look nice as well. But the real gems are again fantasy and sci-fi. I just love the lighting and the colors. Okay, that one lady has three arms, but I otherwise really like the pose in the image. Let's take a look at amalgamation. Meaning, the action, process, or result of combining. For some reason there's a lot of game boards and wooden blocks. This word doesn't do that much with the nature images. Except turns landscapes into rock sculptures. 
city looks kind of ordinary mostly, as does interior. But we do see some really nice designs in the architecture category actually. Portraits look quite powerful and ethnic too. And as usual I really like the fantasy and sci-fi images with their awesome castles and greenery filled terraces. Our next word is cacophony. Meaning, a harsh discordant mixture of sounds. And there is a lot going on in those images. There's choirs, animals, monsters and whatever else. The chaoticness continues in the wildlife images, but does not really come out in the landscape or macro images for some reason. In the architecture category, the city images are probably the only ones that the word somehow affects. Interior and architecture look kind of normal compared to the city images. But portraits and fantasy again have really much going on. Sci-fi seems almost tame next to these other images even though there's a lot going on in those images as well. Now let's explore effervescent. Meaning, giving off bubbles, fizzy, or vivacious, merry, lively, sparkling. And the fizzy drinks and bubbles are present in all of the images basically. In nature images we get some nice summery bubbly stuff too. Wildlife animals are either splashing in the water or drinking it. And lots of bubbles in macro images as well. City and architecture images have also a lot of bubbles in them. Architecture even has some of them incorporated in the designs. And more bubbles in the rest of the images too. Almost like underwater. Fantasy images are again my favorites. The next word on the list is elusive. Meaning, difficult to find, catch, or achieve. And I guess it's difficult to achieve for mid-journey as well because there is lots of text here. But the nature images have all a bit different but nice feel to them. I like the half-hiding wildlife images. I guess elusive is a bit hard to incorporate to architectural images. I don't find these particularly special. And I guess this is the first time in this video when I have been disappointed by the fantasy images. And oddly there is so many cats in the portraits. The following word is pinnacle. Meaning, the most successful point, the culmination. As one would expect, mountaintops and skyscrapers. And wine for some reason? Very pointy stuff in nature images and animals on top of mountains or cliffs. And both city and architecture have very pointy skyscrapers. Those mountains don't really look like anyone. I didn't know you could take a portrait of a mountain. Fantasy and sci-fi pinnacles look really cool. Next we have arcane. Meaning, understood by few, mysterious or secret. But as one would expect from other use of this word, we get a lot of mages. For some reason lots of text too. Nature images get a fantasy twist on them too. Very majestic castles and animals. And architecture theme continues the fantasy style. We see it in all images basically, I love it. Oh wow, I'm surprised that we got so many mages in this theme. I did expect that from portrait and fantasy, but sci-fi too? Moving on to clandestine. Meaning, kept secret or done secretively. I don't understand how Midjourney struggles with this word. Maybe it's just the lack of a subject in the images that is causing the text in all images. But luckily we get rid of that in the nature images. Similar images here as there were with elusive. The Beatles are different I think. City and architecture images seem to favor some shady alleyways or narrow streets. Same seems to be going on in sci-fi themed images. The alleyways are just in a futuristic city. And portrait and fantasy depict shady women. With hoods. And up to no good. Coming up next is surreptitious. Meaning kept secret, especially because it would not be approved of. 
I guess this kind of sounds like a reptilian. Because there is nothing in the meaning of this word that I found that could explain why we see reptilians in all of the images. Landscape seems to depict muddy puddles where one would see crocodiles or other reptilians. And of course wildlife is crocodiles, frogs and iguanas or chameleons. As is also macro. I guess the reptilian theme is kind of difficult to translate to architecture. But we do see some scaly stuff here too. And in portraits, fantasy and sci-fi we go back to reptilians. Very scary looking creatures there, but I love these images. Let's take a look at ubiquitous. Meaning, present, appearing, or found everywhere. We get a mix of some abstract stuff and very urban environments. Even in landscapes we have some urban parts. And wildlife animals are also mostly of animals in an urban environment. Macro doesn't seem to know what to do with this word. Not especially big changes to the architecture related images as they usually are quite urban. I really like the portraits that this word generated. And the fantasy images are also more urban. Sci-fi images look like just normal sci-fi images, no big changes there. Our final word is peculiar. Meaning, strange or odd, unusual. Very distinct drawing style there although lots of text can be seen there too. For nature images this word doesn't really do much. But architecture is a different matter. The cities have a nice whimsical feel, architecture too. Portraits and architecture don't really have that much improvement there. But I do like the fantasy images. They could be looking just more fantasy, but I guess they are somewhat peculiar. I hope you also find some things that you liked out of these. If you did, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more content like this. And I also appreciate all comments, they help me improve what I do here. But let's continue prompting.